In this lecture, we're going to cover input slash reference and also system output. So I'll give you a quick recap of the previous videos. Then we'll move on to step input and unit step input, impulse and sine wave, graphical outputs, and I've got an example. So after this lecture, you should be able to understand the um, following key points. So understand the form of various discrete time input slash references, i.e. step input and sine wave. Understand the discrete time system output model. Uh, um, sorry, understand the discrete time system model captures information at the sample points and apply the above to a practical example, i.e. the water tank level control. So here you can see the sample data control system. So as we spoke about previously, it consists of continuous time signals. So if your um, system whereby your actuator is, is, is generally normally um, an analog component, so and in terms of the modeling, that's continuous time, and also your sensor, again, typically um, an analog signal. And then because we're moving on to the use of a digital microcontroller computer, this works in discrete time events, and i.e. the need for discrete time um, systems modeling and control. So when we're considering just the open loop system, so the open loop system, just to, to recap, last in the previous video, we effectively coupled up the zero to whole model with the system model, and we developed a discrete time model. If we were just to apply an input to the system here, we could do so. So we could just apply an input to the system. Okay, so we could apply an input and then just see in terms of, well, the, the output to the system. So that's one one particular model that we can look at in terms of inputs. Alternatively, you have here the reference. So the reference is what we desire from the control system. So just to recap, the reference is what we desire. We measure with the use of a sense what we're actually getting, compare the two, form an error. This error then multiplies by the control algorithm, um, if it's some form of PID control, and then you have then your control output, and the whole deal with that is that the controller is trying to compensate for any error and to get the system to behave how you desire. So in terms of inputs and references, so here we have the input where we can we can effectively model with a, a step input, a unit step input, etc. And the reference, likewise, we can use the same input. So both have the same form of mathematical models. So a unit, um, so a step input here, continuous step input, is given by this. So you should remember this from when you studied continuous time modeling. So unit step input, and the notation we're just using here is U of S, just to denote um, the input. It could be that if, if this was acting actually as a reference, that uh, you'd call it R of S. So this is equal to A over S, where A can effectively be specified at whatever value you choose it to be so. And what this here is, is U, U of S, A over S, is effectively, if you were to go back to the time domain, it's just, a, it's just one. Uh, well, in this case, it would just be A. Okay, so it would just be some form of constant A. And as you can see here, A here, and this is what the step input looks like. So it, it's some form of step change um, in terms of the system. could be applying a voltage to the system. Um, and yeah, it could be some form of reference. It could be desired displacement. Um, yeah. In terms of a discrete step input, it's given by this equation here. And if we look at the tables of transform here, you can see A over S, which in our case is A over S, because we're just going to step input at the moment. That transfer transforms uh, in the transformation Z over Z over Z minus A. In this case, we've got one. You can see the value there is one, but it would actually be Z over Z minus A, as you can see here. Okay, so that's a discrete um, step input. And effectively, like I said previously, you can specify this A value to be to be dependent on the application. A lot of the time, though, we just use a value of 1. So here you can specify the value for these A's. But as I said, a lot of the time we use 1 in control theory and simulation. And the reason why we do that is because we just want to apply an input or a reference to the system just to test the system in terms of how well it's behaving. So a unit step input effectively just means that we specify value of a of 1 and as you can see on this graph here we've specified a value of 1 and this then if we look at the discrete um, unit step input will just mean that you have a value of 1 there so as I said in practice this a value here could relate to something physical or desired temperature angle force pretty much whatever you can measure um, 
you can you, you, you can pretty much uh, relate it to that and when I say that it could relate to physical that's normally when you're setting up your closure loop control system or your sam sample data control system where you're actually physically trying to um, control um, a given uh, physical system so when you set up your reference so in terms of other inputs I'm not going to spend too much time here so you've got your impulse it's just like it's just like hitting the system of a hammer and your sine wave here so in terms of the impulse the impulse value in the in Laplace and time when well Laplace it's one and this just transforms into the discrete time system modeling as one as well and you can see the equation here on row seven for the sine wave so sine wave in, in time domain continuous time and then discrete time sine wave is important when we're looking at kind of the frequency response so we're interested in effectively testing to how see how well a system tracks a certain reference in okay, case so if you put a sine wave into the system, sometimes we're trying to to test kind of it, the ability to, of the um, system to respond to a certain frequency on the on the sine wave and the ability to track that. So that's all good. So what we've done in the previous video was we looked at taking a at something that looked like this here. You can see here and discretizing this and effectively getting g of z so this zero to hold here this continuous time trans function we effectively went through a process to get a discrete time transformation so a representation of that in discrete time if you have a look at this video here so you can see on youtube if you look at the next video in the series after the one after this one matlab for discretizing a continuous time system and applying a unit step input what i go through in this video is first of all dis how to discretize a continuous trans function with the use of MATLAB so it's just a simple command that you'll see C to D continuous to discrete and it will effectively C to D it will apply um, but will effectively discretize your continuous system subject to a uh, zero to hold and a sample interval so it'll do continuous to discrete on the continuous time system subject to a sample interval so in this video I initially plot one graph so one graph that might look something like this and then what I then go on to in the video is I plot four graphs and on the four graphs what I've done effectively is I've varied the sample interval so I've gone first of all the sample interval 2 1 0 0.25 and then 0 0.01 and what you can see on these responses here is if you look at the legend you can see here you've got continuous signal so it's this um, solid line here and then you've got discrete time which is a dashed one so this one here is for a sample interval of two seconds and you can see here the sample point effectively is there and there what matlab does is it, it puts a staircase between the points but for the discrete time model the point you're interested in and the and the point the model's actually capturing is at the the kind of the left of the knee point or the point at which this line here touches the continuous um continuous time signal so that's for two seconds for one second obviously it's just sampling twice as quick so you can see the point here here and here and again just to repeat what MATLAB does it puts kind of a staircase in between but you're not really that interested in this bit because this isn't actually the information you're capturing the information the discrete time model is capturing is at the point where the where the kind of the this knee here touches the continuous signal and that's the information that you would effectively be sampling and providing to your digital control system or providing um, well the information that you provide in the discrete time controller in terms of the sample data control system and then when we're moving on and then when we're looking at the modeling that we've been doing so and again similar to that 0 0.25 seconds so you can see now I'm sampling four times as quick as the previous one and then finally 0 0.01 second and what you'll see is that the signal very much looks similar to continuous time discrete and continuous time because obviously you're sampling very quick it means that you obviously you're potentially you're going to provide your controller so your control algorithm with a lot more, more information well when i say a lot lot more information more frequently you're going to be providing it with information so watch that video have a have a go at plotting these graphs and investigating or exploring changing the sample interval so a further example i've got here is the water tank level process so you should have seen this um, model before. So this here, this first order trans function describes effectively the water tank dynamics here. 
and the model has been taken by from this source here, so Bolton Mechatronics 2018 book 7th edition. So this equation here um, is given by the GP, which is the process of this, is equal to H of S, so the height of the tank, over F in, which is the flow in of S, which is equal to 1 over AS, where A is the cross-sectional area, plus rho, where rho is the liquid density, G, which is the acceleration due to gravity, over R, which R is the resistance. So the above equation has been rearranged into standard form. Okay, and I'm not going to go over standard form in too much detail now, because you, if, you, if you're not sure about that, you need to look at standard form, um, look back at the notes in terms of standard, or the video in terms of standard form for first order transfer function. But what this is telling me, the first order transfer function, is telling me the system gain, which this will tell me the final value of the system, i.e. when the system's in steady state, the final value of the system, so the amplitude of the system response when it's in steady state, is 1 over rho g over r. And the time constant, which tells me how fast the system responds, is equal to A over rho g over R. And then what I've done is substituted in some values. So for the system gain, 0 0.25, and for the time constant, 10. And what this is effectively will tell me straight away, I know that the final value of the system is going to be 0 0.25. And this 10 here, that will tell me again. Look at the time constant. Go look back at the notes and have a kind of an idea in terms of what the time constant tells you. But I can roughly tell, looking at that, that system is going to get to the final value of 0 0.25 in around 50 seconds in terms of the open loop system. Just one point to note, this is the open loop system. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to introduce the closed loop control system transfer function. So the closed loop transfer function is given by this equation. Again, this is an equation you should recognize. So G subscript CL, so for CL for closed loop, is equal to KP, which is the proportional gain, NS, which is the numerator of the of the open loop system, which in this case is going to be 0 0.25 multiplied by 1, so it's going to be 0 0.25. D of S, which is the denominator of the open loop system, which in this case is 10S plus 1, plus KP multiplied by NS, which is as we just um, spoke about. So you can see over here, I've substituted in the values. So initially, we're going to go for a KP value of 5. And then you can see I've substituted in the denominator, numerator, and eventually I've ended up with this here, this closed loop transfer function. What we want to do now do is look at discretizing this. So this closed loop transfer function, right now we're in the continuous time domain. What we want to do is discretize it. So exactly the same um, way that we did before apart from before we did it on the open loop system, now we're doing it on the closed loop system. G, C, L, Z, closed loop. Then we've got the numerator of the zero hold here that you, you should hopefully recognize this form from the from when we looked at the previous video on discrete time systems model. The Z transform of 1 over S, G, subscript, C, L of S. So the closed loop transfer function. And then you can see here, what I've done is I've substituted in G, C, L, so you can see that there. And then if I look at the tables of transform, I can see row 6, the tables of transform, gives me the, the form that I'm looking for. That's the same form there. What I would have to do, though, I'm not going to go into too, too much detail in this. You can go away and look at the maths for yourself. But what I want to probably do is divide this equation here get to get this to 1. So I want to divide the numerator and the denominator by 10. So it'd end up with it just being 0 0.125 um, over S plus 0 0.225. And then I'd then use the table. And then you can see my alpha term would be 0 0.125 down there. And my alpha term here would be 0 0.225. And in my sample interval, I'm going to initially just pick a sample interval of one second. Again, that value there would be um, one second. Then what you do, obviously, is simplify that. Um, put that into your calculator. Alternatively, you can just do use a C to D command that hopefully you're aware of if you've watched the YouTube video. So if you haven't watched the YouTube video that I was talking about earlier, watch that video and you can do exactly the same. You could just take this, um, well, you could just take the this here, closed loop transfer function for the system, use the C to D command on that, and it will give you a discrete time system for the closed loop control system. But alternatively, it's quite simple. You can just you can just substitute in the in the uh, in the the numbers here. You can see alpha here, boom, and then alpha here, and then all we got to do is substitute TS. 
you know when you multiply it by this, z minus 1 over z, well, that z there is going to cancel with that. Okay, imagine if I just z minus 1 over z. That's going to cancel with that, and then that z there is going to cancel with that. And then you just go end up with a coefficient on the top, and then you go end up with z minus, and then again, some coefficient. And if you did that, that there is the transfer function that you should end up with. So 0 0.119 over z minus 0 0.7985. And you should notice here that I said one second sample interval, and you'll notice that. And again, the discrete time model, what it's effectively doing is capturing information at these sample points. And you'll notice there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten sample points in ten seconds, because I told you the sample interval was one second. So that there is my continuous time um, system model. So what I've done, I've done as in that YouTube video, I've um I've um investigated that and then I've also well continuous time then I've also investigated the continuous time so I've got both plots on the same graph what you could do as a further exercise is the effect of the proportional gain on the system output can be further explored using MATLAB so what you can do is is have a go at effectively putting this equation into MATLAB keeping KP as a variable and then just altering KP discretizing it and then just seeing the effect of the KP that's something we're going to talk about in the in the next video in terms of the effect the KP has on the system response. But you can initially have a go at that. So I hope in this video you've now understand the details of various um, discrete time inputs and references. So these can be used just for the input on an open loop system or the reference on a closed loop control system or a sample data control system. You understand how the discrete time system model captures the information from the continuous time system model at the sample point. So you need to be very aware that continuous time signal, all we're interested, well, the discrete time model, all it's doing is capturing information at the sample points. The above then has been applied to a practical example, i.e. the water tank level control. So we've initially just taken the continuous time model of the water tank, discretized it, and then you can see the discrete time equivalent for the closed loop control system. So what we're going to look at in the next few is we're going to look at the performance and stability of the closed loop control system, and then we're going to initially, and then we're going to look also at the um, the Z plane. So I hope that's been helpful. If you've got any questions, just send me an email.